I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy days. I uh, am honored to be able to present to you today. So thanks for your participation. Also, um, as everybody's lines are muted, if you have any questions, please be sure to submit those uh, online through the chat box that you'll see on your screen. As we go along, there will be an opportunity at the end to answer questions. But if we were in a room together, I would want to have as interactive a session as possible. So certainly, if you do have questions along the way, it would be welcome to address those. Before we got to this presentation here, I did want to mention that the majority of this presentation is based largely on Chapter 3 of my book, Stakeholder Engagement, The Game Changer for Program Management. If you haven't read it uh, and you're interested, after today, you can find it on CRC Press, and I've provided the link here, and you can also find it on Amazon. Before we get into the big piece of the, the uh, session here, I do want to start with the story. It's been quite a while now, maybe eight years ago. I was a new employee at the company. I'm not going to get into names or specifics here, but I was a new employee at a fairly large company. And prior, I was a full-time employee and brand new. But previously, I'd been a consultant elsewhere. So in my first week, I was asked to meet with key leadership members to get input on where they felt pain points in relation to organizational structure and strategy. And this was specifically for the IT department. So my business, meeting with managers, had really great conversations. And at the end of that week, I met with a very senior leader. And after we talked for a bit, he asked my opinion about a specific item and where in the organization that item should be handled. That specific item was something I considered to be pretty minor. It was not even related to technology in any way, shape, or form. Um, it actually had to do with handling a newsletter, a particular newsletter uh, having to do with the business side of the organization. So I gave him my opinion. He immediately turned right in the face and got visibly agitated. I'm, there was steam coming out of this guy's ears. Then came this big lecture about assumptions and about how I couldn't just march in there and I don't understand the environment, I don't know the history, and I don't know what promises have been made. Statement, you don't know what promises have been made, really stuck with me and shaped a lot of how I handle stakeholder management now. Um, it was a big lesson learned. Well, that little item to me was little to me. It was not little to the stakeholder. Uh, you know, I tell the story as an example of why it's important to understand everybody's perspective and also the network of relationships in an organization. It turned out that this guy had an arrangement with somebody who he'd worked with for 20 years that promised him that he would always make sure this newsletter was taken care of. Well, this other individual is now in IT, still writing the newsletter that had nothing to do with IT. And so of course, I was suggesting that it be handled elsewhere. Not that it would be dropped, but I didn't get that part of the conversation. But if you don't understand the network of relationships in an organization, even the smallest little thing can completely derail you. And so that is where I, I started really thinking more about how I handle stakeholders and stakeholder engagement. So the focus of today's session is really on just that, learning how to uncover that web of informal relationships that will control the progress and outcomes of your program and, and how to include those individuals in your stakeholder engagement plan to drive program success. So, as far as the session overview, uh, a few things we're going to cover today. One is I'm going to introduce the concept of organizational network analysis to you, more on that in a minute. We're going to work to understand the difference between traditional organization charts that you may be used to seeing and social network maps. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the art of what I call the coffee talk, using your informal networking skills to build your network, and also some tips on virtual relationship building. We're going to take all of those pieces and discuss that and how to synthesize the information gathered in your formal and informal network, um, network efforts, networking efforts and to build those into a power map. Okay, organizational network analysis. Um, organizational network analysis is a formal means of understanding the uh, relationships and information flow in an organization. It provides a view into the true information flow of an organization and provides a visual depiction of the organization in a relational view. So it shows not just the links between people and groups, but also the strength of those links and how information flows between those links. 
It actually is uh, it's very formalized in that it uses mathematical algorithms to map those relationships and, and the information flow. You may be used to seeing. So this, what you're looking at here is just a traditional organization chart. And I know, I apologize, the names are pretty small here, but you've got Stella up there at the top as the SVP. So you would think that Stella would have the most influence in this organization with her direct reports David Sanders, Cooper Townsend, and Brenda McLemore, and Wendy Connors over there, kind of being the next uh, level of leadership. And then there's a number of names and boxes below there. This is what a lot of us are used to seeing in our organizations. And when, when you come into it and you're looking at a new program, you might immediately think, okay, I need to establish relationships with Stella, David, Cooper, Brenda, and Wendy. And that's really where my focus may need to be. That, that is not necessarily going to get you to the guts of how information is really flowing in an organization. Certainly, it's still important to always include your program sponsors. If Stella is your program sponsor, you better believe she's going to be on your list of important stakeholders to talk to. But you need to make sure that you understand the relationship elsewhere in the organization, not just the top. <clears throat> We're getting more time on this slide here. So this is a very simplified organizational network map. So if you do an organizational network analysis at the end, you end up with uh, a map. And this, like I said, this is very simplified. This just has a small number of people. If you had an organization of, say, 400 people that you did an analysis on, it would be much larger, um, and you could maybe see more relationships. But the one to do are to identify the hubs where most activity is concentrated. So if you look on here, you can see Zumba there has quite a few lines coming in out of Zumba there, and Finn and Connor is also. You'll notice that Townsend is kind of up there on his own. So he reports to Ambler, that was the top lady, and that's great. So they have the communication going back and forth, but nobody's feeding any information to Townsend. So is he really uh, feeding the right information to Ambler? So if, if you're a program manager and you're not talking to Townsend, and Townsend's talking to Ambler, um, that could be a potential blow up. Uh, then you've got, let's see here, um, you also want to identify potential bottlenecks or points of failure. So you've got Zumba, you've got so much information going into Zumba, is she going to become a bottleneck? Also a way to discover the outliers, they may have untapped knowledge. So for example, you have Martin and Peterson in the lower right-hand piece here, and they're connected to each other, they're not connected to anybody else. They may have really important information that's not getting shared. So that's another uh, potential group you may want to understand more about what data they have. And, um, and then another piece is discover where it may be beneficial to create a new connection where one does not currently exist. So now from Steve saying, how could you possibly obtain this information? And Steve, that's exactly what we're going to get to as we uh, dig further into this. We're going to talk about how to do a formal organizational network analysis, high level. And we're also going to talk about the uh, informal way of gathering this information. I, I have a, an opinion and a bias towards one over the other, and I'll, I'll get into that for sure. John is asking, what about Connor? Well, Connor's definitely, oh, he's got two links, Stanley and two to a, a new hire to be determined there. We're missing a, missing a box there. <laughs> new hire to be determined. But he does have a couple of links. But he does have a connection to Zumba, but he does not have, if he's going up to Ambler, Connor goes to Zumba, Zumba goes to Sam, and Sam goes to Ambler. So it's taken a while for any information for Connor to get to Ambler, may get bottlenecks with Zumba, for example. So types of things you're going to look for, um, you know, like is it connected upward, he's not, he's not connected at all, parallel or downward. Um, and others are not well connected at all. This guy, Finn, kind of in the middle here, if you had looked back at the other organizational chart, he's the actual program manager. He's not connected directly either to Ambler's direct report that is senior to either of Ambler's.